Oh, hello everyone. Welcome back to Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth 2. This has got to be the ending of this episode. It must be. We're all here. And I really don't know what we're going to do. Now we found out that there was an accomplice to the conductor. And they've admitted as much, but we don't know who the conductor still is. We have an idea. Already called him out and everything, but... Uh, how we're gonna prove it? I don't know. I think the time has come to now that we've got to do this frenzy. I'm so glad you're here, babe. <clears throat> oh my god, I'm sorry. Also, this is the worst day for me to be doing this because my voice is shot, but I will do my very best. I'm so sorry. Order in the court. Prosecutor Von Karma, your report, please. Yeah, so frenzy went to uh, get some reports from the police to make sure that we're on the right page here. I have bad news. We've searched every inch of the Grand Tower, but the auction gavel was nowhere to be found. I fucking knew it. It's up his butt. <laughs> that is most unfortunate. It seems I am left with no choice but to pronounce a verdict. Wait, 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 wait. Surely there's something we can do here. Well, <coughs> it sure seems that way, you know. I'm just going to go ahead and say the coughing is just part of his voice. <laughs> Normally you wouldn't commit a blunder like leaving a we murder weapon behind, you know. The best criminals would never do something like that, you see. It's in your butt, isn't it? It's in your butt, boy. I don't have enough information. Is this as far as I can go? Yes, yes, it's a shame, you know. But it can't be helped, you see. This takes me back, you know. All those defendants who came to me asking for a plea bargain. They trusted me, you know. Told me every one of their dirty little secrets, you see. And when it came time for the trial, I'd get them sentenced to life in prison. They were all completely dumbstruck, you know. Each and every one of them. <laughs> Dude! What the fuck? Oh, how I wish you all could have seen it, you know. The, the stupid look on their faces. Dude, what, what in the world? I shall hereby announce my verdict. Please humbly accept the words of the law. There's nothing more I can do. With this, both Kay and I are... What are we gonna do? If only we had some evidence! I never thought that I would be passing judgment on you like this. You, all, you seem upset about it. And I'm actually surprised that you are. Is this the end? It can't be! The defendant, Blaze the Best, I hereby indict you. <gasps> Justine! What? What? Justine, do you, you believe me? Oh, what's gotten into you all of a sudden? She's standing on our side now, look! I have here documents regarding a certain case. The IS-7 incident. A case that happened 18 years ago. Yeah, we know it very well. Documents, you say? Why would you suddenly... Wait. You don't mean... On the day of the crime, the record of your keycard being used was because... I came to this room to fetch these documents, of course. Although, when I entered the meeting room, it seems it was before the black market auction had begun. Oh shit, okay. At first I told you that I came to gather documents about you, Prosecutor Edgeworth. At that time, I simply could not tell you the truth. She knew all the... She knew then? Okay! Justine! Well, what are you doing, Justine? Uh, why are you indicting Pops? Uh, without any basis? Well, this is slander! Stop it, you know he's guilty. <laughs> that was a wonderful remark, Sebastian. Huh? Oh, really? Of course, there is a basis. During the case 18 years ago, Prosecutor Manfred von Karma fabricated information regarding the body. That was because the body of the sculptor, Isaac Dover, had been stolen. Right, we remember. Papa fabricated information about the body? What do you mean? Uh-oh. Oh, Franzi. Detective Lacer, who handled the initial investigation, reported that the body had gone missing. However, in order to deceive Prosecutor Von Karma, 
There is a person who purposely did not report to him that the body had disappeared. That was our father. What? What did you say? That person would not forgive those who defied him, nor would he allow others to hold power. He would use any means necessary in order to bend others to his will. Oh shit, no, it was not. <laughs> I just like I was like, that was our dad. I got that confused, never mind, it's not. And then, also 18 years ago, Director Young was ordered by a certain individual to write a fake autopsy report. <coughs> oh my god! Dr. Young... Dr. Young was the one who wrote the autopsy report for the IS-7 incident? Oh, holy shit! Please wait! Granny didn't do anything wrong. Well, she was ordered by that person. She had no choice but to obey. That person... That person... Was the chief prosecutor at the time. It was him. The chief prosecutor 18 years ago. You don't mean... Oh my god, I'm sorry, my cough is really bad. The chief prosecutor who gave Papa his first penalty? It was you. It was none other than you, Blaze the Best. Dude! What? No, oh no, he's gonna stand up for his dad. Oh, that's really sad and pathetic. Well, what are you saying? Pops would never do something like that. Oh no. Sebastian, we do not need your opinion right now. Blaze the best. Do you have a rebuttal? Fabricating stuff about the body, Von Karma did all that on his own, you know. Falsifying the autopsy report. <laughs> Young, you would actually do something like that? Oh man. Oh, you really did some terrible things behind my back, you know. Wait a minute, you can't just throw everybody into the bus. Stop that. Seeing as how all the parties concerned are here today, we should ask them directly. Please wait. Granny is- Ow! Granny. I'm sorry. I knew. That's why I- Yeah. Because if I didn't, he said he would expose you. That's why she had to be an accomplice here. He had the goods on her. If I didn't assist in the crime, a granny would be prosecuted. That's what that man, the conductor, told me. So it is him. It's, it's absolutely him without a doubt. As we suspected. So, Miss Jensen was being threatened. Was the conductor who threatened you blazed the best? The, the, I don't know. The person who threatened me was the auction conductor. They do have a similar physique. But I never saw the person's face. Any trivial thing is fine. Give us a characteristic that could be a clue. Well, well, that's right. The conductor's mask, it exposed just a tiny part of his face. There was a tattoo there. I'm sure of it. Conductor's clothes. The conductor wore a white jacket with a purple flower, white gloves and a mask, and he had a facial tattoo. Is that why he has the beard? Okay. A tattoo, you say? Objection. Oh my god. I really have no idea what you're talking about, you know? As you can see, there are clearly no tattoos on my face. Listen! Is that why you look like fucking Cro-Magnon, man? Okay, well, I get that now. So that person doesn't match me at all, you know? The person who threatened her. This so-called conductor. I wonder who it is, you know? Ah, nice. Try, dude. I don't think so. <laughs> You have incurred the wrath of the goddess of law. I suggest you watch what you say. I cannot believe she's on our side. This is so awesome. Hasn't he incurred your wrath rather than the wrath of the goddess? Jill Crane had been pursuing you just as I have. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm so sorry about my voice. And I will not let her death be in vain. Right, she was a friend of hers. Crane was, you know... You say she was pursuing me? My, my, I... I didn't really know her that well, you know. I don't mind girls chasing after me, you know. But I don't recall her ever falling for me, you see? Ew. Stop that, that was her friend. You didn't know the victim well. 
That is a testimony we haven't heard up until now. Before the eyes of the goddess of law, you shall give us an official testimony. Make him do it, girl. Yes. Is he gonna do it? I see, I see. Everyone is bullying me. Oh, well, cry me a fucking river about it. If you're gonna go that far, that's fine, you see. I'll just have to make you disappear. What does that mean? Wait, you said that in front of everybody. Every last one of you. Dude. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I shall cooperate with you as well. Girl, I'm so glad. I love them together, I really do. I love them standing together. They just, oh, they just look like such a badass team. If we let this opportunity slip by, I doubt we will ever get him to stand in court again. Please, do not let this chance go to waste. Girl, I won't. I, I, okay, I just need Franzi on my other side and then it's perfect. Come on. Yes, I promise I will live up to your expectations. Oh, we gotta do it. You guys, here it is. We gotta do it. Now then, Blaze the Best, you shall testify regarding the victim. Here we go. Okay. Regarding Jill Crane. The victim, Jill Crane, was a member of the Prosecutorial Investigation Committee. You see, that's the truth. At least I'm assuming it is. Personally, I didn't really know her that well, you know. Well, either way, it's not like I had a motive to murder her, you know? I have no idea why she was pursuing me. You see... That's it? Wait, that's it? That's... There's not much there. You intend to deny your guilt until the bitter end, don't you? Well, of course he does. There's no way Pops could be the criminal. Well, I mean, he's my Pops, you know? He's the very best, like no one ever was. Uh-huh. Nice reference, by the way. Yes, yes, Sebastian. If you're going to stick up for me, be sure to have a clear basis, you know. All right, I got it. I'll clear you of these false accusations, Pops. I believe in you, Pops. We won't lose to someone like Mr. Edge. I do feel a little bit bad for him now, because the dude was so mean to him all the time. And here he is standing up for you, your own son. Yes, yes, you really are pure, you know. That person... He really loves his father, doesn't he? However... One must be able to accept the mistakes of their father. Oh, Franzi. Well, yeah, you would know about that. No matter how much they may look up to him. Franzi, oh! <gasps> the screen with both of them! I love it! Each person must atone for their crimes, no matter who they are. This is going to be hard for Sebastian, but it really will be. I simply cannot overlook his father's crimes. Ooh. <clears throat> okay, 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 okay. Let's do it. Press everything. I didn't really see anything that stood out immediately, but let's see. The victim, Jill Crane, was a member of the Prosecutorial Investigation Committee. Yeah, we know that, but maybe tell me a little bit more? If she was a member of the PIC, then you should have been familiar with her. Well, I knew her face, but that's about it, you know? How can that be? It's not like we met each other on a regular basis, you see? Okay. Personally, I didn't really know her that well, you know. Okay. So you're saying that you weren't very familiar with the victim? Well, that's right. I didn't even know about the burn mark on Crane's hand, you see? <laughs> oh my god, you guys, I'm so sorry. You didn't know about the burn mark? Oh, well, you see, even if I had gotten close to her, she would have disappeared soon. What the fuck does that mean? It's a pain to remember someone, you know, when they're just gonna disappear. What does that- what does that even mean? In other words, anyone who defies him disappears. I see, so it, it, he just looks at everybody like pawns. I would like you to add your statement about the victim's burn to your testimony. Okay, wait. I only just learned that she had a burn mark on her hand. I only just learned that she had a burn mark. Can I press that? I don't think I have any evidence against that. So you're saying that you didn't know about the victim's burn. Is that really the truth? You really are persistent. Oh my gosh, guys, I, I beg your pardon. Coughing and sipping water and doing my best. Do you really think I would pay attention to every little wound on a woman's hand? Maybe, if you're into that. I would think that the burn mark on the victim's hand would be hard to miss. 
Now that you mention it, Jill Crane would regularly wear gloves, <gasps> like a Kyoko thing. Okay. I too did not know about the burn until the incident occurred. She was like Kyoko. She was wearing the gloves all the time. Jill Crane regularly wore gloves. I thought so. She was probably trying to hide the burn mark, you see. I understand how sensitive a woman can be about these things, you know. That's true. I would like you to add your so-called sensitive understanding of a woman to your testimony. Oh shit, Hedra's not taking any crap. Maybe she was always wearing gloves in order to hide the burn mark. Maybe she was always... We have something! Do we? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Where is it? Hang on. Don't we have something? Just one was post-mortem burn mark on victim's hand. That's the truth. The keycard record, the victim's letter. Has a facial tattoo. Testimony. No. We have something. This, 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 this right here! Records audio of someone's talking to another person. One of them has a burn mark. It's recorded on the tape. Oh my god! Okay, okay, okay. I knew we had something that mentioned it other than the autopsy report. Jill Crane regularly wore gloves. If that is true, then it creates a huge contradiction. How would they know about the burn mark if she was wearing gloves at the time? Oh, a huge contradiction, you say? I would like you to listen to the voices recorded on this stuffed animal one more time. Here it comes. And the... I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. Silence, huh? I've been waiting for my chance to get revenge all this time. Right. It was it was mentioned. It's no. We were under the impression that this was the moment when the victim was murdered. I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. We thought that this statement was said by the culprit. Isn't that fine? What's the problem? Dude. <laughs> There's a huge problem with it. If the victim had been wearing gloves from the start, it would have been impossible to see the burn on her hand. That's what- Yes! So, okay! Objection. Oh, stop. You sound like me right now. Gloves come off very easily, you know. She couldn't have taken them off during the auction. That's- Well, that is true, though. But wait. That's not true. Wait, what? Karen, what? Miss Crane had been wearing her gloves when I took her place. She must have been wearing them before she was murdered. What? What are you saying? You... Don't you understand the position you're in? I... I'm not scared anymore. I have Granny here with me. Blaze, your day of reckoning has finally come. Oh shit, dude. Everybody's against you now. What the fuck are you gonna do? Oh shit. Oh my god, he almost burned himself. Somehow it seems like you want to disappear permanently. Whatever. We'll take you on. We've got all of us here. The only one who will be disappearing here is you, Blaze the Best. Oh, oh, Sebastian. Hey, how dare you say that to Pops? Does it really matter if the burn mark was visible or not? Of course it matters. It certainly does matter. If the burn mark was visible, then we'd have a complete turnabout of the situation. <laughs> he said turnabout. <laughs> Well, what are you saying? If the victim's burn mark wasn't visible, well, what exactly does it tell you? Um, if the victim's burn mark wasn't visible, what does it tell you? The culprit also had a burn mark. The victim didn't have a burn mark. There wasn't any. <gasps> if the victim's burn mark wasn't visible, the culprit also must have had one, and that's why it was mentioned. That's what I'm gonna go with. It's gotta be that. It is, isn't it, Edgeworth? Sebastian, turn your way of thinking around. If the victim was wearing gloves, then her burn mark could not have been seen. In that case, whose burn mark was seen? Someone else's burn mark? Precisely. The culprit must have had a burn mark as well. In other words... God, what are the, what are the fucking coincidences of that, though? Like, what, what are the chances of that? I knew who you were right away. You can't hide that burn from me. The person who said this was not the culprit, but the victim. Okay. What? Oh, your face is gonna get all cut up, dude. It's gonna get all messy. 
What are you going to say to that? You got burn mark on your hand? I mean, to be fair, his, in all his sprites, we've only seen the one hand with the lighter on it, not the other. And he plays with fire all day. It's very likely that he could have one. Sebastian, could you please step aside? Edgeworth, all your reasoning up till now was just a figment of your imagination, you know? Don't gaslight me. The culprit had a burn mark? Where was it? If you can't answer that, then your logic doesn't hold up. Where was the culprit's burn mark? I wonder where the burn mark could have been. Well, during the auction, wasn't everyone wearing a disguise? Indeed. During the auction, everyone should have been dressed in a particular way. If the burn mark was still visible under those conditions, then... Is the burn mark the tattoo on the face that they were talking about that was seen under the mask? If that was the only part that was visible? No, no, why don't you show us? Where was the culprit's burn? You'll have to show me the proof. You'll have to show me the proof. Are we going... Conductor wore a white jacket, purple flower, white gloves, and had a mask. Closet. It's gotta be the facial tattoo that's the only thing that matches together. Is it this? It was what the conductor was wearing during the auction. It was this. In other words, the outfit that you were wearing at the time. <laughs> what can you figure out from the clothes alone? Objection! The conductor had been wearing a white suit, white gloves, and a mask. His attire had covered up most of his skin. However, according to Miss Jensen's testimony, the conductor's mask exposed a small part of his face. In addition, while she thought there had been a tattoo there, it's possible that she mis simply mistook the burn mark for a tattoo. And some people get kind of tattoos that are actual like burns or scars in the, in the style of. So yes, that could have absolutely been seen. A burn mark on his face? Objection. Yeah, because you keep playing with the lighter so damn much probably. It's all very scintillating, but I'm afraid you're getting excited over nothing, you know? Don't ever talk to me about you being scintillating, because he ain't. None of the PIC members have any burn marks on their faces. Time to shave, boy, let's see it. Get the Norelco out and ready. Naturally, that includes me as well, you know? Huh? But Pops, but... Sebastian, could you please be quiet? He was about to say something. Oh, Sebastian was about to say that he does have one. He knows. Oh, Sebastian. I do feel bad for you. Oh no. Normally, Sebastian is a nuisance to everyone around him. Well, I can see why. He's had a terrible upbringing, probably. But this time, I owe him my gratitude. That reaction from Blaze's own son. It reveals the truth more clearly than anything else. Thanks to him, I am confident that my reasoning is correct. It has to be. I know who that, uh, who that identified piece of evidence belongs to. I wonder what's wrong with that prosecutor. Usually, Sebastian is slower to arrive at the truth than anyone else. However, this time he has probably figured it out. I think he figured it out for anyone else. His own father is a criminal. Since he knows the truth, he's in pain, isn't he? Oh, if he didn't know the truth, we could have remained blissful in his ignorance. Okay, we're here in order to pursue the truth. It doesn't matter what path my reasoning take. Oh, sorry, my reasoning takes. The important thing is to arrive at the truth. Once before, when I lost faith in my reasoning, you said that to me and showed me the way. This time, I shall show you the truth. You are innocent. I... I, I also want to know the truth. Mr. Edgeworth, please tell me. Yes, that's the spirit. <laughs> That's impossible, you know. For all of you. I mean, just where could I possibly have a burn mark? It's nowhere to be found, you see. There's no evidence to prove that I'm the culprit, you know. <sighs> That's right. There's no contradiction at all. There's no way there can be a contradiction, not for my pops. Oh, Sebastian, I'm sorry. Sebastian, I understand why you don't want to admit it. However, if you avert your eyes from the truth, you will regret it forever. Francie, say something. You've been in this situation. Maybe you can help him. Pops, what should I do? Oh, he doesn't care. You're not going to help your own son. I really wonder why you're such an idiot, you know? 
Sebastian. If you really want to save me, you'll have to try a little bit harder, you see? Gotta use your head, you know. Honestly, you really are a useless idiot. That's so mean! Don't say that! I mean, we've said it before, but you know, not to his face. No way! Ugh, but I tried real hard. I tried my best, Pops. I went to the school you told me to, reached the top of my class just like you told me to. Just look at this jacket. Only someone who graduates at the top of his class gets to wear it. I did everything you told me to. That's how I got to be the best at the academy. Oh my goodness, this is hard for somebody like me. Oh, Sebastian. I even won all those awards just so I could be like you, Pops. Oh, this is, this is, this is reaching a little close for me, I'll tell you guys what. Oh boy, to have like really demanding parents and do everything for them. Only for them not to really give a shit in the end. Oh boy, I d oh. Oh, Sebastian's just turned around for me entirely. Is this the point where he turns around for most people? Oh boy. You really are such an idiot, you know? Poor kid. You know, these gold stars you got on your tests, I made the teachers give them to you. What? Every speech and debate contest, all the judges were my friends. <gasps> oh no! You know, Sebastian, if you weren't even able to notice something like that, you're really not worthy of being called my son. Don't you think? That's fucking terrible! Uh, uh... Oh, Sebastian! Oh no! But he said that in front of everyone! You're horrible! Even my son has disappeared. Hey, you don't look too... You don't care about it? Oh, it's enough to make me cry, you know? He was trying his best for me, and yet... He was totally useless, you know? He's not something to be used! You are truly a despicable person. As the chairman of the PIC, and as a father. Even I feel sorry for that foolish prosecutor! God, seriously! Poor Mr. Prosecutor! That was not okay. Blaze, the best you... Just what do you think of your own son? He's just a useless pawn, you see. Whoa now, maybe you should look into the mirror before you criticize me, you know? <gasps> Don't go after Justine! I mean, even you. You also used Sebastian to get close to me, didn't you? I cannot deny that. However, he is not a mere pawn. He always tries to do his very best, even if the results aren't up to par. I've seen just how hard he tries. And yet you refuse to even acknowledge it. Get him, Justine, tell him! <laughs> that kid's no good. No matter what he does or is told to do. That's terrible. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I shall leave this offering to the Goddess of Law to you. Deliver her divine judgment against Blaze the Best. Yes. That was my intention. From the beginning. If there was a burn mark on the Conductor's face, then Blaze the Best must be hiding it. What was he wearing during the auction? That is the key to revealing the truth. Okay. Well then, allow me to hear your answer. Please show the piece of evidence that proves the culprit had a burn mark on his face. <sighs> What's the evidence? It's not the clothes anymore, because they just said they showed a piece of his face, I don't think, anyway. Flower... Case memories... No, 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 no. What are we looking for? What are we looking for? The autopsy report? No. Key card record? No. Didn't someone mention it? Someone mentioned it. The masks, that might be something. Photo... Where is it? Karen's testimony when she switched... What did this say again? The conductor prepared wigs so Jill Crane can be impersonated. For some reason there was both a straight wig and a wavy wig. <gasps> oh no! He doesn't really have a beard! The wavy wig is on his face! Is it? Is it on his face now? Is what I mean? Oh my god! Present it. That's it, isn't it? Oh my god, okay, 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 okay. If you would recall Miss Jensen's testimony, 
There's still one point that remains unexplained. Two types of wigs had been prepared. One, which was left unused. What do you mean, the wavy wig? What are you talking about? It was something Miss Jensen found when she switched places with the victim. What does something like that have to do with the burn? Inside the costume trunk, Miss Jensen witnessed two wigs. One of them had been used by Miss Jensen to make her look like the victim. Now then, just what was the other wig used for? It doesn't seem like it was a spare wig. There's no need to overthink it. Just compare the attire of the true culprit, the conductor, with that of Blaze the Best. You're wearing it right now. You're wearing it right now. Don't stare at me like that. Don't you think that there's just one spot where there is a huge contradiction? Specifically around his face. So that's... Not a wig at all? Indeed. It was no wig. Blaze the best, it was your fake beard. Oh, well, I, I thought he was wearing the wig as a fake beard, but we still came to the same conclusion. There it goes. Oh no, you're not gonna burn it up? <laughs> this is a real beard, you know. Don't tease me like that, Edgeworth. Ew. Oh, don't screenshot this. You guys are gonna screenshot it, though. I, I know that you are, and you know what? Go right ahead. It's fine. Your son must have realized the truth before anyone else. That's why he was trying so desperately to protect you. You were also worried that he would tell the truth. Isn't that why you drove your son away from here? Because he knew that his father was hiding a burn under his fake beard. <coughs> Plays the best. How about you remove that fake beard of yours? He's not gonna do it. Whoa, oh shit. Okay, we're all about to burn up. Oh, oh, oh. It burns, it burns, it burns, it burns. Ew! Oh, fuck me! No! That li Okay, you're disgusting. Ew, what the hell? Huh? A burn mark. Prosecutor Edgeworth. Justice have has been served before the goddess of law. For that, I give you my thanks. I should be the one thanking you. Blaze the best. I hereby announce my verdict. Give it to him, girl. You shall be taken into custody for the murder of Jill Crane. Do it. Fucking do it, though. Do it. Oh, my God. Okay. Justine, I'm so happy. I really, really am. Mr. Edgeworth, thank you very much. I'm, I'm so happy that you believed in me until the very end. Of course, darling. There's no need to thank me, Miss Prosecutor. Well, no. As a friend, I simply wanted to save you. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I bring good tidings. It seems that former Chairman DeBest has been safely detained in the detention center. That's great news. However, the search for the murder weapon, the auction gavel, continues. So it wasn't up his ass like I thought. Well, all right. I still think it's up there, though. Plays DeBest is a shrewd man. There is a good chance that he has already disposed of it. There is also one piece of testimony that concerns me. Blaze the Bass mentioned that the only thing he did not fake were the letters. What do you mean? To Miss Crane, thank you so much for helping with my plan. I'm glad that we can help each other get what we want. It's like killing two birds with one stone. Right, the, this and, and the letter to Kay, I'm assuming. First, he found this letter in Jill Crane's clothes. Dear, oh, it was from it was from Kay to Jill and, and then back. Then he also found this letter on Kay, who was unconscious in this storeroom. The contents of the letter seem to suggest that the two had been corresponding with each other. Which is why Blaze the Best assumed that the two were working together. Ridiculous. That can't be right. I think it could be, though. I think Jill was trying to get... was trying to get Kay back what she wanted. Remember her memories? After reading the two letters, he decided to pin the crime on Kay Faraday. In order to cast suspicion on her, he planted one of the letters in a noticeable spot. The deceased Jill Crane left breast pocket. Isn't that just an excuse? Yes, that is what I thought as well. It may have been simply a last to effort to save himself. However, before the stern eyes of the goddess of law, these are all trivial matters. His crime shall certainly not go unpunished. 
Justine, I'm so happy. With this, I have finally fulfilled one of my long-standing missions. Judge Courtney? Will you tell me what you know? Why did Blaze the Best murder Jill Crane? And what lies hidden behind this case? Yes, I don't mind. You have the right to know everything. Long ago, Jill Crane was in love with a cameraman. That man was pursuing the black market auction as a journalist. And then, before he could reach the truth, he was erased. I see. The feelings and the items Miss Crane inherited from her beloved brought her to the auction. She had come to exact revenge on the conductor, Blaze. Although, in the end, she was the one who was murdered instead. I see. So that's what happened. While the goddess of law cannot condone her actions, we have succeeded in her goal of bringing Blaze the best crime to light. So, Judge Courtney's goal was to expose Blaze to best. And reveal the dark secret of the PIC. Um, by the way... What happened to the young prosecutor? We have been unable to contact him for some time now. Oh, jeez, I hope he's okay. Do you have any idea where he might be? I had not been truly working for him, so... I see. I feel very sorry for him. What you should be sorry for is the fact that he was kept in the dark until now. No matter how cruel reality is, he will have to accept it. That's just like Franzi. She's so fucking tough. I mean, she's had to accept a lot. If he can't, he won't be able to walk his own path in life. That's very true. Ever. Franzi, you know about that. A father's influence is not something that is easily erased. Edgeworth, you know that as well. So does Franzi, actually. However, I'm sure he will be able to change from here on out. Well, I hope so. Yes, that's right. Well, surely, you must be right. Will I, too, be able to walk my own path in life? Yeah, what are we gonna do about Kay? Kay, is your body all right? Well, uh, yes, thanks to you. I'm so sorry. Even though you're my patient, you ended up getting suspected because of me. Ow! You can't just take care of the patient's body. You gotta take care of the heart, too. That's my granny. Kay, how are your memories? Well, I feel like I'm on the verge of remembering something. Really, Kay? That's great. Well, then I shall take my leave here. I will be presiding over Patricia Rowland's trial. That would be the trial for the murder of Horace Knightley. That's right. Who's in charge of the defense? Miss Crane was supposed to be her offense attorney, a defense of the that, that. But now that she has passed away, we are currently arranging for a replacement defense attorney. Jill Crane had been in charge of Patricia Rowland's defense? That seems like a weird coincidence, doesn't it? That's probably connected. I also have to get in contact with Sebastian quickly since he's the prosecutor in charge. Well then. Ah! Uh, please wait! What about Mr. Edgeworth's prosecutor badge? What will happen to his prosecutor badge? With the chairman's arrest, the PIC is no longer functional. So I cannot answer that question easily. Perhaps, one could say, only the goddess of law knows. But that's... It's alright, Kay. I mean, we pretty much already made up our minds. You don't need to worry about me. This is the path that I've chosen. It seems you have no plans to change it, either. Of course not. I chose this path to seek the truth. With the departure of Blaze to Best, the law has once again returned to our hands. If you truly desire to continue the prosecutor's path, I am willing to assist you in reclaiming your badge. Thank you. That's really nice of you. I appreciate the sentiment, but I must decline. Edgeworth, you really are? He's really gonna do it. I did not relinquish my badge with half-hearted feelings. I see. 
It seems that our paths of law will continue to run counter to each other. Tuh. Until our paths cross once again, I shall have you hold on to that badge. That was my intention from the start. Oh, Franzi, are you going to be okay? She was really angry before about it. However, on occasion, the goddess of law is quite generous. Please return this notebook to its proper owner. Kay, there's your memories! Your promises! Kay's promised notebook? It seems this was scheduled to be put up for bidding at the black market auction. The name Kay is written on the notebook. It seems Blaze de Bass quickly realized this belonged to the girl, since the letters he found also contained the same name. You speak as if you really did not know about the letters. Are you saying that Blaze really did not prepare the letters himself? Yes. That man said so himself. Kay Faraday's goal was to steal back the notebook. Jill Crane's goal was to get revenge. In order to achieve their goals, the two teamed up to infiltrate the auction. Or so he says. Unfortunately, this is all Blaze's misunderstanding. It was purely coincidence. If the attorney from the PIC and Kay really were acquaintances... It would be strange that she would never mention it to me, considering her personality. <laughs> you really do trust her, don't you? You do, don't you, Edgeworth? It's so sweet. In the end, the notebook was used as another red herring, but... It's something that is very important to that girl, isn't it? I'll make a special exception and return it. I'm sure that's what the Goddess of Law desires. Justine, that's so sweet. Thank you. That's... Um, I appreciate it. I shall pray that she recovers her lost memories. Justine! I freaking love you now! Oh, God. I'm so happy you weren't bad. Um, is something wrong? Can we give it to her? Let's have her read it. Okay, I'm returning something very important to you. Yeah, let's have her look. Oh, look at this! Oh, Edgeworth! Huh? This is... Okay, do you remember this? Do you know what it is? Always greet people with a smile, even people you don't know. Never cry in front of strangers. Oh! Look, Daddy. I wrote them all down. Yeah, I'll be sure to follow all of our promises and become a hero just like you, Daddy. Ah! Oh, that's right! There was one more. I forgot to write down the most important promise. Promise number five. Always try your hardest to learn about things you don't understand. <laughs> I'll be sure to remember. I'll never ever forget them. Oh my god, Kay! Always try your hardest to learn things you don't understand. That's right! I'm... I am... Oh no, is she alright? Oh my gosh, it's so scary. Kay, are you alright? I am... The great thief who steals the truth, Kay Faraday. I'm the second Yatkarasu and Mr. Edgeworth's assistant. Kay, you remember? <laughs> well, it's kind of embarrassing though. Thank you so much. It's all thanks to you, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh my god, she's back. I'm gonna cry. Even when I lost my memories, you were still always trying to save me, right? <laughs> it seems you're back to normal. Wow. Hey, you've gotten better. Your health comes first. Now you can relax. Just make sure you don't run off and lose all your memories again. Ah, uh, Miss Jensen, Dr. Young, thanks for worrying about me. Hey, if you're feeling all better, how about changing back into your own clothes? I washed your clothes for you, so they're nice and clean. These clothes? Wasn't Detective Gumshoe holding on to them? Well, he said forensics was done with them, so he gave them back to me. Have they revealed the results of the analysis yet? Uh, to be honest, I actually didn't think to ask about that. Well, now, now. More importantly, let's hurry up and get you changed, okay? Hmm, still. Isn't it better if we do not remove her bandages? Uh, she should be fine now. Kay just bumped her head. She didn't really have any other major injuries. Wait, then why did you bandage her? <laughs> then why was she so heavily bandaged? Well, better safe than sorry. A pound of prevention is worth an ounce of cure. That's my motto. Oh. 
What a troublesome motto. I know. Come on, Kay. Let's get you dressed up over there. Kay, you're back! <laughs> now, this is definitely what a great thief should look like. A smile certainly suits you best. In the past, and now as well. Oh, Frenzy, that was so sweet. Miss Von Karma, thank you for coming too. Uh, I, I only came because Scruffy asked me to. That's Scruffy. He also wanted to see her energetic self again. Gummy? What happened to him? Who knows? Maybe he was disgusted with the man who willingly threw away his prosecutor's badge. Oh, come on now, come on! Detective Gumshoe? I must be going soon. I'll be taking these ladies in for questioning. Yeah, I'm assuming they're not done with it. Ugh, what's gonna happen to the two of them? One aided in the murder of an attorney, the other forged an autopsy report 18 years ago. Those crimes definitely won't disappear. Of course, I will mention in court that they were being blackmailed by Blaze. We'll be just fine. As long as Granny's by my side, we're invincible. Well then, take care. Frenzy, I'll miss you. Gosh, I'm so glad you were here. Now then, Kay. Sorry to ask so soon right after you regained your memories, but I have some questions. Well, sure. Ask me anything you want. What were you doing on the day you lost your memories? Well, on that day, I was asked to come to Gord Lake. Were you? Well, this is pretty. I don't know who called me there, though. As I was watching the moon at Gord Lake, a person in a red raincoat approached me. Right? All of a sudden, he used some kind of drug to knock me out. What? What is she saying? The place where Kay saw the moon was at Gord Lake? When I woke up, it seems I somehow ended up on the roof of the Grand Tower. My mind was still in the daze, so I stumbled around for a bit. She wasn't even here? She was brought here. What the hell? That's when I found the person in the red raincoat collapsed. I was startled, and when I stepped back in panic... She fell down the shaft. I fell from a high place and got knocked out cold again. And when I woke up, all my memories were gone. The person in the red raincoat? Who exactly was that person? Oh yeah, well I was certain that I saw them walking in midair. Oh, somehow this is all starting to make my head hurt. Please calm down. You're just a little confused because you've only recently gotten your memories back. Most likely this is the main cause of your confused memories. This is the main cause of your confused memories. You fell in a hole. Your memories of two places. Probably the two places, right? Because Gord Lake and the tower at once, that would confuse anybody. That's gotta be it. This is probably the main cause of your confused memories. You saw the moon at both Gord Lake Park and the Grand Tower rooftop. Which led you to confuse the two places. Plus, they had to have been in different positions in the sky. Huh? But aren't they totally different places? Even if I was in a daze, do you think I'd really get them confused? Well, you might have done. Most likely there was something at the Grand Tower which led to your confusion. What? The problematic area? It was probably where the moon was, right? Which was like over here at, at the point, at the time. Was it or was it? Oh, you know what, but it could... <sighs> it could be also here because she saw someone come over from here in the air. You know what, I'm gonna click that actually because that seems more likely. The Grand Tower rooftop and Gold Lake have two points in common. They both have a cherry tree and a food cell- Oh shit, I didn't even think about that! Oh my god, you're right, Edward! Now that you mention it, I wasn't even thinking in the correct term. Your memories were confused because you had been in two similar locations. The person that you first saw could not have been walking in midair. They were simply walking on the ground at Gord Lake- That's why! Of course! You must have gotten that scene confused with the Grand Tower rooftop. So, so that's what happened! How dare they steal the memories of a great thief? They'll pay for this! Nevertheless, I wonder who the person that assaulted Kay was. The person in the red raincoat, who appeared at Gord Lake. Right, it wasn't Blaze. Hello? Oh shit, my phone. Hang on. What's that noise? Well, it sounds like it's coming from the storeroom. 
Mr. Edgeworth, let's go check it out. What? What's this? My shutterbug stance is tingling. I smell me another scoop. Y'all still here? Listen, she's been there the whole fucking time, dude. I guess they didn't really turn around to see her. What's going on down here? What the hell? This is gonna be the longest episode ever. What's happening? What's going on? Mr. Edgeworth, this walkie-talkie thing here is what's beeping. Huh. This transceiver. Why do I feel like I've seen it somewhere before? Because we have... Hello? It's still beeping, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm not particularly familiar with this sort of device. Come on, we have to answer it. Here it goes. Click. Hello? Edgeworth speaking. Okay. Please don't just answer it on your own. I am speaking with Mr. Miles Edgeworth, I presume. This voice is... Shelly to kill it, of course. That's where we've seen it before. I congratulate you on resolving the case, however... Can you truly say in good conscience that it has been solved? Was that the voice I gave him? I don't know, it's been a hot minute. Are you aware of the mastermind who is pulling the strings behind this incident? You! Why do you know about the incident? That's not important right now. Wouldn't you agree? Right now we're discussing the mastermind behind the case. It's Junko. I knew it. I've had an inkling that such a person existed even before you said anything. God, this is giving me so many major dang and rompa vibes. I said this from the start. And now we've got a mastermind. After all, there was evidence to suggest that someone had used K to disrupt the investigation. Huh? There was? Uh, so who's the mastermind? It's Junko. I'd like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Would you kindly show me the evidence that indicates the existence of a mastermind? Wait, is there one? Uh-oh. Hang on, let's look. <sighs> Ticket stab, flower, pamphlet, case, memories... Wait a minute. What's in this again? Thank you very much for helping me with my plan. I'm glad we can help- It's like killing two birds with one stone. Please get revenge for 12 years ago. It's gotta be this. This proves that something there is going on. Okay. It was the letter that Kay allegedly sent to the victim. Well, come to think of it, I don't remember writing that letter at all. Who could have prepared this letter? I too am quite curious to know. So, you're not the one who wrote it. What could I possibly gain from doing such an act? Is it not necessary for you to stand in court order to make the truth clear? What can you possibly do now that your badge has been taken from you? I look forward to finding out from the shadows. This man! How does he know that? Do we have an understanding? Please ensure you do not betray my trust. Now then, if you'll excuse me. Click. He said the case wasn't solved yet. Well, what did he mean by that? And why would Mr. DeKiller even bother telling us that? Oh, nothing makes sense anymore. It's true. I'm more confused than when we started. This case has not reached its true conclusion yet. However, although I've lost my prosecutor's badge, who I am has still not changed. While I don't know where this may lead me, I shall reveal the truth. I swear. Oh, Edgeworth. Oh, shit! So we have a mastermind? We've got it. We've, we're going to have to obviously figure that out in the next one, right? Because the next one is the last episode of the game. The Grand Turnabout. That's got to be it. We'll find out then. <gasps> this was so good. Enjoy today's long episode, everyone. I hope you really enjoy it. Um, I'll do my best and we'll start a new one in the next one. But, oh my god. This was so good. This was so good. Damn. This game is so damn good. I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. I'll see you soon in the next one. Toodaloo.